Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I want to show you around the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, or should I say Z Flip here in the UK. And here it is, in all its flipping glory. But what do you think? What are your first thoughts? For me, well, I actually asked my partner Sarah what that little handheld thing that women keep their powder and makeup in, the thing with a mirror. Apparently it's a makeup compact, and I can't really unsee it now. On a serious note though, I'm actually a lot more impressed by the flip in person than I thought I would be. The 6.7 inch folding screen is actually made of glass rather than plastic which we get on pretty much every other folding device out there. And you can barely, barely see the crease. It's much less noticeable than the Galaxy Fold. We do still get a slightly protruding plastic bezel around the edge of the phone and Samsung are now using a new fiber shield to prevent dirt and debris getting in around the hinge. Apparently they've tested the hinge for 200,000 flips but we'll have to wait and see about the long term durability. I have to say though, it does feel well made and not too fragile. Plus, given what they've learned from the fold, I'm not too worried. So the flip comes in three colors, mirror purple, mirror black, and in some markets, mirror gold. I actually really like the purple one, but it's an absolute fingerprint magnet. I've never whipped out my cleaning cloth this many times when filming a video. Just quickly guys, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. I team up with Audible a lot because I actually listen to a lot of audiobooks. Taking the train into London or flying to events around the world, Putting my headphones in, counselling out the outside world, and just enjoying a good book is so nice. From audio dramas like Lock and Key, which I'm listening to at the moment, or checking out an Audible original podcast like The Dark Web. So get involved and start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. You can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Plus you get one free audiobook credit every month. So visit audible.com slash techchap or text techchap to 500-500 and give Audible a try. So when the flip is closed, it's actually surprisingly chunky. It's even thicker than the Galaxy Fold. But the advantage is it's much shorter, it'll easily fit in your palm. To be honest though, I'm not entirely sure how useful that is. I mean, don't read into this next sentence too much, but I'd rather have something long and slim in my pocket than short and fat that sticks out, if you know what I mean. I suppose if it was any more rectangular or taller when folded, it would create such a massively tall screen when opened, it would just be too uncomfortable to use. Once unfolded or flipped open, we get a super tall 22 by 9 screen. And you know what, unlike the Galaxy Fold, you actually forget all about the Fold and just use it like a regular, albeit quite tall, phone. You really don't notice the crease, it's comfortable to hold, and the tall screen is great for browsing through socials, websites, and of course having two apps side by side. In fact, there's actually three ways of using this, open, shut, and in flex mode. When closed, we get a tiny 1.1 inch cover screen that shows you the time, messages, some app notifications. The really cool bit though is you can actually use it as a tiny viewfinder, either for taking selfies or for your friends to see how they look when you take their picture. I think it's a great idea, but I really wish it was just a bit bigger. You may end up with a lot of squinting eyes in your photos as people try to see themselves in it. Then you can open it up and use it in flex mode. So the hinge is more like a laptop than say the Galaxy Fold in that you can actually have it open at different angles. So it becomes its own little pop socket stand and comes in handy for everything from hands-free photos and videos to video calls and using apps in split screen. For example, in YouTube, you can see when I go from fully open to flex mode, it puts the video on the top screen and then the comments and other recommended videos on the bottom. I really like that, although apps will need to be optimized for this so don't expect everything to work this seamlessly out of the box. Then you can use it like, well, a regular phone when it's fully unflipped. Despite its height, it's actually pretty usable one-handed. Well, with a bit of finger gymnastics sometimes. But thanks to Android 10 and Samsung's One UI 2, it's a lot easier to use. For example, we get the swipe in from the edge to go back gestures, so you don't always have to keep your thumb at the bottom of the phone. There's also a dedicated one-handed mode that shrinks the screen. And of course, you can always use it in landscape mode two-handed, where it feels more like a Nintendo Switch. So I really do think the Flip is the best example of a folding phone we've seen so far. And I think that's mainly because of the glass screen and the refined hinge. But the fact is, you are making a lot of compromises to get this. The main one is the price. Considering the specs, you're definitely paying a premium for this. The Flip will set you back a cool £1,300 or $1,400, which is the same price as the Galaxy S20 Ultra, but you're getting a lot less for your money. For example, the Flip uses last year's Snapdragon 855 chip, there's no 120Hz screen, it's Full HD+, rather than Quad HD+, there's no 5G, the 3300mAh battery is relatively tiny, and I'm a little bit worried about how long it's going to last. It only supports 15 watt charging, and we only get two cameras on the back, a main and ultra wide lens, which is fine. I mean, I think they're the most important lenses, but again, compared to any of the S20s, especially the similarly priced Ultra, the Flip misses out on a lot. 
There's also only one model of the Flip with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, which is fine and actually more than the base storage of the S20 Ultra, which is a bit strange, but there's no micro SD or any bigger storage option. On the flip side, sorry, I had to do that at least once, we do get stereo AKG tuned speakers, wireless charging, the latest software, and the fact that, you know, this is a flipping phone. It hasn't been this satisfying to hang up a call in about 15 years. Back to the cameras for a second, and it's a similar setup to the base S20, albeit without the telephoto lens. We get new 12 megapixel main and ultra wide lenses with the improved sensors that we get on the S20, along with new features like single take and night hyperlapse. Although since we're using last year's processor, there's no 8K video, and I'll have to test camera quality in the real world to see if there's any difference between the S20 and the Flip. As for selfies, again like the S20, there's a single 10 megapixel hole punch camera on the front. So then, first impressions. Well, it is expensive, and you are missing out on a bunch of features compared to the S20 Ultra for the same money. And I am kind of worried about battery life. However, with all that said, I still really like this thing. I love innovation, it's just something different. I mean, the Galaxy Fold cost about two grand last year, and while I'm sure we'll see a Fold 2 later this year as well, this is a lot cheaper and a much better implementation of a folding screen. It's also definitely targeted at a younger, more stylish audience. You'll definitely turn a few heads getting this out on the tube or in a cafe. And I think for a lot of people, that's kind of the point. Oh, and compared to the Motorola Razr, I think this is light years ahead in terms of design, specs, and overall quality. Make sure you are subscribed though for my full review coming soon, and let me know what you think of the flip in the comments below. Would you buy one, or is it just an expensive gimmick? Again, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Check out their awesome range of audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals by signing up for a 30-day trial at audible.com slash techchap, or you can text techchap to 500-500. And then you can choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Plus, you get a free audiobook credit every month. So why not give Audible a try today? Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chap.